Alright, guys, back. After doing some tweaking to the staff, like pay, and added a couple more uh, vendors, I think we're doing pretty well right now, you guys. We have no alerts on the left hand side. That is awesome, you guys. I'm loving that. Like, the main thing that uh, I just discovered was that if you click on a staff member, like, uh, I can come over here to employment and actually see how their, like, their happiness is in terms of their pay, and I kind of tweak that, like, if we pay them less, yeah, you can see it's, uh, it's got a frowny face there. Pay them a little bit more, and they got a big old happy, uh, smile right there, so that's awesome. Kind of tweaked some, but some of the guys were being paid a little bit to, oh gosh, what's happening here? That's a glitch. <laughs> I guess these guys are trying to get it. oh, can I make this path? Might be able to make this path bigger, I don't know. Staff room is so far away, I'll be worn out by the time I get there. Yeah, I know that. It is kind of far away, but by the time we have this the staff island set up over here, we may not uh, we we may move like this this and this area going to be taken care of. Maybe not this. Yeah, yeah, this temper wolves, tortoises, and peafowls, and the exhibit area. They're going to be uh the staff stuff is going to be on this island, and then of course up here. Hopefully, this will take care of anything that's like right there and anything that's like right here. You know. So hopefully that'll be good, and uh, they don't have to, you know, travel so far away, and maybe I'll even uh, split the work lines up a, uh, a little bit easier. Maybe I'll even make Timberwolves and Exhibit part of this, and then of course the Peafowls, and then of course all this will be part of uh, this staff area, this work zone. So maybe I'll split it up like that. And, oh yeah, I don't know if you guys know this, but I did actually place down the paths for this upper area here, and of course we're going to have another staff area here, which will be very helpful. So that'll be great. Of course, we don't have to shove everything in one place. We can kind of spread things throughout. That way, you don't have to, like, like we could put a staff room over here and another one of those staff rooms over here. We don't have to have, like, ten staff rooms in one area, you know? So we can take a couple of these because we have three right now, so we can get rid of those and just kind of move them into different uh, work zones. But for right now, I think we're in a really good spot, you guys. Like, we're even making money, which is great. And guest happiness is great as well. We're at four and almost eh, a little bit of five stars right there, so that's awesome. Education is still low, and I'm pretty sure that's because of our, our minimal amounts of creatures we have right now. Of course, I feel like the more creatures we add, the more education we can add to that. And of course, the better our education rating will be, so that'll be great. Uh, the turtle rating, speaking of ratings, uh, you can see everything over here in the terrain is great. Everything's green there, and of course, if we click on a peafowl, go to their terrain, uh, they're fine with everything over here as well, so that's awesome. Everything is nice and balanced. 67% on hard shelter for peafowls. What about uh, hard shelter for the tortoises? How are they doing? 68%. Okay, so I may add, just because the population is getting up there, I may add another enclosure, like, right there. That way we have one there, here, and here, where all the critters in here. And I was even thinking, like, like, wrapping this path around, and even, like, going, like, right here, and then connecting up right there. That way, we can even see, like, behind this area. That way, you know, I feel like, I, I've, I've even read some of these people's opinions, like, ah, zoo, zoo ticket price is fair. Okay, that's good. Not a lot to do here. I got yuck on my shoes. Yeah, hopefully the extra uh, waste, you know, the chander people. <laughs> hopefully they can actually take care of that. But I've seen some people complain that uh, they can barely see the creatures inside here. So maybe I'll even add another pathway similar to what we did with the timber wolves that goes back here. And of course, if I do that, I'm going to have to move this uh, ever so slightly to where it, you know, it doesn't unpower like these buildings or anything like that. And then uh, hopefully we'll be fine in terms of that. And, oh yeah, we could, I, I deleted all the, uh, the heaters and everything else that's over here, so I, I feel like we just get rid, save as blueprint, no, <laughs> I feel like we just straight up get rid of this, uh, this tortoise area here, so I suppose if I want to do that, just go over here to overview, edit barrier, and just delete everything here, and I'll, I'll be fine. So here we go, let's delete these, boom, 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 everything's getting deleted, and I guess the whole entire area is deleted there now, so there we go, now that's taken care of, and, uh, now we don't have a tortoise enclosure there. So that's good. Of course, this area is going to be exclusively for staff members, so I may just uh, replace all these paths right here and uh, make them, I don't know, staff paths. This one right here, this like kind of red brick looking thing, uh, it does kind of blend in with the, the wood, you know, the most, because it is red and the wood is kind of a brown, so it kind of blends in a little bit. So it's not quite as a jar, oh god, it's not quite as jarring as like the gray paths that I put over here. So I may change these into red as well, just to kind of have some consistency and uh, I'm like the gray, I guess the gray does match the gray buildings here, so I guess that's a thing, but I think just for, uh, consistency's sake, I'm gonna make these out of this, like, red brick staff walkway or whatever, pathway or whatever this is called, right? So there you go. And, uh, oh yeah, I don't think I mentioned it yet, but yeah, I, I moved, uh, trees and bushes and stuff like that over here to kinda <laughs> help cover up the staff buildings there. I mean, I'm like, there's no reason for any guests to come up here anyways. 
But uh, of course, if any of them do come up here, you know, if I add an enclosure right there, of course, hopefully I'll mask these buildings a little bit better, right? <laughs> but I feel like we were doing quite, oh my gosh, look at the reflections and stuff, you guys. Wow. And of course, yeah, I, I need to add more uh, lights over here. Uh, previously, I was unable to add lights over here because there was no power like in this corner of the uh, enclosure. So I didn't have any lights over there. But now I can because we have a uh, power generator right here that is, you know, generating power for not only the staff buildings, but this part of the Timberwolf area. So I think we're going to be fine in that regard, you guys. Uh, how, are, how, are, how are things going on over here in the Timberwolf area while we're here? There's the alpha male. Uh, Animal appeal 1575. That's really nice. What about you? That's another male, but thankfully not fighting for alpha status, although I may be speaking a little too soon. Do we have another baby? No, it's just one of their feeder things right there. Oh, yeah. We can get, uh, fit research. Yes. We can get uh, the vets to continue research on, like, the tortoise and the timber wolves and get some more stuff for them. So, uh, I don't know if that actually costs money or not, but, uh, hopefully it doesn't. <laughs> I'm like, we have $13,000 right now, so I don't think it's really that big of a deal either way, right? But, uh, somehow this... I guess they just keep eating out of the heckin' forging box right here. So I need to call another keeper to this habitat. But, uh, yeah, we're in a pretty good spot right now, you guys, which is awesome. We're making money. Guests are happy. The animals seem to be happy. And we even got a perfect five-star rating from the latest inspection from the inspector. I feel like we're in a really good spot right now, you guys. All right, well, we finally, uh, oh gosh, it started snowing while I was just kind of sitting there. <laughs> But we finally, uh, we finally cleared out this area of all the, uh, the staff buildings and whatnot. So I, I was thinking about, oh man, it really got covered in so quick there. <laughs> I was thinking about finally getting those, uh, those enclosures. What are they called again? Would it be in Habitat or the, uh, exhibits? Uh, no, not there. Nature. It's probably facilities now that I think about it, right? Exhibit. Oh, what is this? Exhibit ed Education Board and Exhibit. Okay, so that's good. Let's get, oh, go. Look at that. It actually gets rid of the snow there. That's kind of cool. Interesting. So I can kind of have a diagonal like that if I felt like it for some strange reason. Or I could do it like this, and I could, either, I could probably slip in one there, one there, one here, one here, one here, one here. Huh, I could slip in a few of these here, you guys. But let's try and slip one in, maybe like right here. This might be pretty good. Of course, we could always fine-tune it here in the future if we ever need to, but uh, let's slip one in right there. That should be good. There we go. Then we can slip in another one right here, I'd say. Or... Yeah, let's do it right there. There we go. Then we do another there, and I'm just going to use this grid here, just so uh, I don't have enough funds. Really? Oh, man, these cost $3,000 a piece. Well, thankfully, we're making money nowadays, so that's good. I suppose that we'd have five exhibits here, because this isn't a shape of like a U right here, you know? Oh, man, I just don't have enough money now. Okay. <laughs> Whoops. Anyways, yeah, I, I guess we could make this in the shape of a U. But for right now, let's grab these buildings and just kind of uh, move them over. I can, so what would it be like this? Move them, and try and center it as best I can right here, so uh, uh... Let me try and rotate it, try and fix this, and line it up. I think right here is going to be the best, uh... Oh gosh, it didn't even place down the uh, pathways there that time, that was kind of strange. Uh, I guess I'll... Oh gosh, I'm low on cash. Yeah, I've, I've got, I've got $2,000, of course, we're not, uh, we're not made of money or anything like that, but uh... There we go, I guess we'll place down the paths like so. There we go, we got them back. There we go, nice. But, uh, I, I am starting to make money. You know, starting to make money. Of course, that just took up some of my expenses right there. What do we have right here? Low in cash. Yeah, I know. I don't know. Uh, it's not really that big of a deal. I just spent, like, what, $12,000 on this, right? Jeez. <laughs> but, uh, of course, we're going to be paying our staff and stuff here very soon as well. But for right now, let's go to exhibit trading. And let's see what different critters that we can get over here. I don't even know if we have enough, uh, if there are enough critters here for, like, five exhibits. Let's see. So we have, uh, let, let's actually go to this thing. This, this gold metal thing right here, because uh, apparently this is this is like, what's it called? Like crowd appeal or something like that? What's that called? I don't know, but uh, like the higher rate they are, the more people will be attracted to them, I guess. So we get this green iguana for 83 conservation credits, which is pretty cool. Uh, we can get a Gila monster for 99 conservation credits right there. I might get both of them, honestly. I might adopt them because we've got 1300 conservation credits. We need to start using them. We have enough money now, by the way, for the uh, for the fifth enclosure uh, exhibit so let's adopt you the gila monster let's adopt you the green iguana let's adopt you and uh there's another gila monster right there i think we're going to skip over it let's try and get some different critters here so yellow anaconda that might be pretty good 423 dollars though and it was being adopted for cash it cannot be released into the wild okay that's not too big of a deal let's adopt the yellow anaconda western diamondback hmm so what, what do we have right now iguana one two we have three 
as before. I kind of want to get a good variation of critters. We have a snake right there, we have an iguana, we have an Elam monster. Let's get like a spider or a something like that, you know? So let's let's keep scrolling down here until uh we get like a like a frog or a spider or a big cockroach or something like that, you know? Giant desert hairy scorpion, I guess that's what it's called right there. Interesting. Uh there is one right here though, for 41 conservation credits. Slightly younger as well, and I did just say, yeah, we need to start using them, so hey, let's do this one. Boom, adopt you. So we've got a, yeah, we've got a, uh, scorpion there. We can get a spider. I don't know, Mexican, what was that called? Mexican, uh, red knee tarantula. Goliath bird eater, golly. Brazilian salmon pink tarantula, sheesh. So we have a scorpion, we can get a spider, heal a monster, iguana, and snake. That seems like a pretty good variation, although I would like to have a frog, I just don't- Oh man, giant centipede thing, or- Was it called? Uh, yeah, it is called a giant centipede, jeez. I had it right that, uh, first time. Titan beetle, goliath frog, yeah, there's a goliath frog right there. Giant tiger lance, I guess we could scatter these other ones, uh, throughout the rest of the park, but these, like, highly rated ones, I guess you could say? We can keep here at the front of the park, so that seems pretty good. Uh, so which one would I want to get here? We can get the giant four scorpion, so the desert one that we got, right? Uh, I don't think so. I think I'm going to get the spider, like I said, so... Which one are we going to get? We're going to get this one, the Mexican red tar red knee tarantula, or a Brazilian salmon pink tarantula thing. Oh, listing expired right there. Yeah, we need to hurry up. Might, might even want to consider pausing here. I uh, can't make up my mind fast enough, but... Uh, let's get this... Oh, Goliath bird eater. Point nine years. That's pretty young. This thing should add, add it to the conservation credits thing, so... There we go, Goliath bird eater. So there we go, all right. Well, now we have five critters adopted right now. Now I need to get the exhibit uh, facilities. We have exactly enough money-ish to make another one right here. Let, let me actually uh, select this. Uh, how do I do the actual like building of this? Hold on. Here we go. Let me see if I could slip this in like right here. So that would go like right there. All right, nice. And let's see if I could actually uh, move all of these enclosures right here and kind of center it in this, uh, in this. Here we go. I uh, might be able to if I... Kind of place it down like so. That's probably as good as that's going to get right there, to be quite honest. So let's place down all the pathways here. So width, that's going to be 13 feet, I think. That's going to be great. And then, of course, we can always fine-tune it here in the future. But uh, look at all those pathways right there, you guys. Nice. Let's see if we can connect this up. I don't think so. It's kind of weird right there. All right, guys, I'm back. Finally, after a long while of, of trying to... Trying to set this down here, I kept on running into like terrain problems for some strange reason. As if you guys remember, I can't actually like mess with the terrain on the scenario, so that kind of sucks. I can only like paint it like you know grass sand and all that kind of stuff, but I can't actually like raise or lower the terrain uh, like at all. So I have to work with what I have. Anyways, I basically just did all this all over again. You guys remember the U shape was a lot more like rounded. I made this more square to kind of accommodate these uh, six enclosures here. I think we had what five uh, creatures. Yeah, we have five creatures here, so we can get a sixth, because I do have six over here, just kind of make it even over here, because I did rework that, you know, so I guess we can go back to exhibit trading. Now, what was it that I was looking at? That I was, oh yeah, I guess either like the frog or the giant, like, beetle or whatever else I guess we can get. I'm kind of thinking about the frog, though, or a uh, snail, there's a snail there, too. I kind of think about the frog, so let's actually, uh, let's, let's sort this by species, actually, and it was called Goliath Frog, so... Try and uh, find that thing in alphabetical. Oh, here we go. All the Goliath frogs right here. I guess we can get. Uh, well, I'm not seeing it. Yeah, I can't get any of them using conservation credit, so that kind of sucks. But the youngest one uh, has more of the appeal or whatever there. This one has the bronze star little award thing, but it has 1500 uh, appeal there. These other ones have higher appeal, just judged by the number there. So this is kind of interesting. So let's see genetics and breeding. Fertility, fertility, all that kind of stuff. I guess we could get multiple and put them in one enclosure, you know? So, I suppose, yeah. Because this does have pretty good fertility and has pretty good longevity as well. I guess we can get that one as well as this male over here. Longevity is not that good, but of course the fertility is like right on the line. And it's the only male we can get. So, perhaps we can get this one. Adopt that for $321. And then I guess we get the male over here. Uh, although, uh, maybe we can wait. Maybe we could wait until the exhibit market has like a better male because this one, 
I'm like, it, it don't really have the best longevity. And it's going to like reset in like 12 minutes or something like that too, right? So I don't think we need to worry about that too much, I'd say. But we have a bunch of new creators here, you guys. This is going to be great for the education thing because we're going to have one or two like different uh, education boards, I guess you could say, for each of these uh, these enclosures, these uh, exhibits over here. So let's go back to exhibit trading. So we have these guys all over here. Uh, send a zoo. They're in the trade center right now. Okay, so that's good. Uh, I don't know if we have them in quarantine or if I have to worry about that for these guys. But I suppose we could just send to zoo. And which one should we put towards the front? I have the Goliath frog right here. Maybe we could put the Goliath frog in the middle. There we go. Let's put him in the middle so we can be in exhibit number nine. There we go. And then the Goliath bird eater. <laughs> Jeez. Which one do I want to do this one? Uh, so a big, big spider. So we have a, we have a eel monster, iguana. Maybe I'll put the iguana here. Maybe I'll put the, like the the normal or uh, what? What? Oh God! What does it say? Uh, contains animals that are incompatible with the animals you're trying to move. Yeah, <laughs> I don't want to accidentally move you into your cheese. But uh, we're going to need to like remember like control the temperature, all that kind of stuff for the frog and humidity and all that kind of stuff for each critter. So I have, have to do that here in just a moment. Pretty sure that's what's yelling at me on the left uh, left hand side. Let's see, iguana. I guess we can move the iguana. Send a zoo. We can put you where the uh, frog is. Put those both in the middle. Oh, look at that. We have the, uh, what was that again? Hold on, it just disappeared right there. Have at least two exhibit species in the zoo. Yeah, we just got that right there, so that's great. Of course, we're going to have like six in here, so <laughs> we're going to have quite a lot of heckin' species here, you guys. So we have, uh, which one should we have in the, the front? The actual front. Maybe a big snake, like the yellow anaconda. Yeah, now what's this thing warning me about? Cannot be released into the wild. Okay, yeah, not that big of a deal. I'll put the snake like right there. There you go. That's going to be like the first critter you see. And then right next to it, we, I guess we can put the Gila monster. So send the zoo, put the Gila monster right there. So we're going to have the spider and the scorpion in the back. So we can put you there and then exhibit trading and put you right here. All right, nice. So uh, in the middle here, by the way, I was thinking like putting like trees and stuff like that, you know, uh, trees, bushes, all that kind of stuff, just kind of line this area here. I did want to put a pathway like in the middle bit here, but I couldn't fit it. So that kind of sucked. So I guess if you want to look at this critter, you have to come from either here or here, here or here, here. Only one location to see the the frog and the uh, and the what's over here again? Oh yeah, the iguana. So that kind of sucks. I can only make the paths so thin, and it, you can see right here, like I, I'm like I might be able to slip that in right there, maybe. Although I don't know if you're actually able to physically look at them through the window there. Maybe you can uh, obstruct it. Yeah, I'm like we just ran to obstruct it right there. So that kind of sucks. Although I can disable angle snap and uh, woo well there we go. Maybe I could try and do that. Hmm, that might work. That way it's not like connecting directly to it. I suppose. I wonder if they could still look at the actual exhibit if it's if the actual road doesn't like uh like run into the actual exhibit there. If that's the case, I can get rid of these two roads. Oh gosh, well that just got rid of something. Whoops. <laughs> I don't know what just got rid of that there, jeez. Uh, oh god, man, I guess getting rid of that gets rid of the whole thing there, golly. Yeah, this is messing up all over the place. Yeah, okay, well, let's just stick to what we had originally. See, so, yeah, that's what I was talking about. I keep running into problems here, trying to try to add all the paths and stuff like that, you know? So, let's so redo all those paths back. And I think we're good right now. So, that, that kind of sucks. These ones right here, you can only see, you know, like, one side of it at a time, so that kind of sucks. Although, we could, uh, we could connect these all together, but... Uh, maybe I'll do that some other time. Maybe I'll do that here in the future. But for right now, well, while we have it paused, let's actually set the environment to each one of these critters here. And of course, remember, we do have two veterinarians. We need to get the... What's it called? Go to zoo. Go to vet research. And then, Oh, gosh. What happened here? Uh, I don't know how we just got a research complete by uh, <laughs> us being paused. I guess we already had that there, huh? Anyways, uh, Celeste Lamb, you're going to be researching the... Is there a hairy scorpion? You're going to be researching the anaconda? Desmond Zimmerman, you're going to be researching the Gila monster. There you go. So those guys are going to be researching those two critters that are both in the front. Hopefully we're going to get some good, uh, what's it called? Like enrichment or whatever for these guys. Anyways, let me just pause the recording and try and get the humidity, the, the temperature of all these exhibits up to what they need to be for each critter. That way they're going to have a nice enclosure for them, you know? So go to pause the recording, work on their uh, enclosures, and I'll see you guys here in just a bit. Alright guys, I am back. Each enclosure now has the correct climate inside of here, so temperature humidity there is good. 40 degrees Celsius, 17 or 17% uh, humidity for the, uh, what's it called? This is a Gila monster, I think, right? Yeah, I'm gonna definitely need to uh, rename this one too, forgot that. So, Gila monster, there we go. And uh, this one, oh wait, the, uh, the snake over here, the yellow anaconda. 
30 degrees Celsius, 90% humidity there, so very, very humid. This uh, Goliath frog right here, 30 degrees Celsius, 85% humidity, so let's rename this one. And by the way, I added these to the uh, front area work zone, so hopefully the keepers can take care of these critters here. Green iguana, so this one's 30 degrees Celsius, 55 degrees humidity, so iguana. I wonder if these, uh, if I, if I go to the Zoopedia, if I go to like, yeah, like the wandering spider, does this say where it's like temperature and stuff is? Uh, for its enclosure. That way, hopefully, it's a little bit easier for me to figure out. Oh, yeah, there it is right there. 23 to 29 degrees Celsius, 50 to 84 percent uh, humidity. So that's good to know. I should have checked the Zoopedia. I just kind of guessed it. <laughs> but I guess from now on, definitely need to check the, uh, the Zoopedia to make sure I, uh, you know, get the correct temperature without, like, making these guys too hot or too cold. Just be kind of kind of trial and erroring it like I did right there, right? <laughs> All right. Well, hopefully these guys are going to be nice and taken care of. Uh, animals, layout. Yeah, the layout here needs to be uh, a lot better, but of course we only have two vets, so there are uh, only two vets, you know, uh, researching these guys right now. But uh, of course, they'll get more stuff here in the future. But for right now, I feel like this is a, a pretty okay setup we have right here for our exhibits, at least our first exhibits, right? I definitely don't do want to go to facilities. Yes, here we go. Exhibit Education Board. Let's definitely do this, because what we could do is just kind of put it like right here. That way it's kind of in the front area, but not like blocking the view or anything like that, you know? And of course, we need to actually set them to the correct critter here in just a moment. So we'll do that here in just a bit. All right, so we've got those educate. Oh, gosh. Yeah, it's kind of weird how the how the camera, like, kind of gets dark and then uh, kind of adjusts right there. But this one is the Giant Desert Hairy Scorpion. So let's set both of these to Giant Desert Hairy Scorpion. Uh, is it really set to the, the one that's closest to it? If it is, then that makes it a lot easier. Goliath Frog. Okay, so that's good. So that makes it a lot easier for me to make sure that I have these education boards, you know, showing the education for the right critter, not the wrong one, right? So it's a Gila monster right there. And hopefully this is going to up our education rating because we have like, what, six brand new critters here. Uh, a pretty decent amount of education. Of course, we're going to have a lot of overlap if we have like speakers and stuff like that. So we're, we're just going to be using these, uh, these like, what do they call it? Just information boards, these exhibit inf information boards right now. And then of course, here in the middle, like I said, I do want to add trees and stuff like that. But uh, maybe for this, these ones here in the middle, you guys know, where is it? Uh, layout, that's not it. I'm at windows, yeah. So window number one, no, that's not it. That one right there, yeah. So we can close window, and I do want to make it a 3D facade, so let's do that. There you go, that way, because you can't really see back there, might as well have it look kind of cool, right? So there we go, that way we can see the uh, the back there's kind of like rocks. Let's do the same thing on this side. Go to windows, which one is it? That's the wrong one. Uh, there it is right there. Let's do a 3D facade for you, the Goliath, uh, giant Goliath, Goliath frog, or whatever this is called, jeez. Uh, literally just Goliath frog, okay, whatever. <laughs> Anyways, for these ones right here, I kind of think about keeping it either all four sides or maybe the uh, the back two windows, which would be that one and that one. Either those could be 3D facades like this. And how would that look? Interesting. I like that, especially if we're going to have trees here. Huh. So if we do that, hmm. Although you can't really like look over there and and see the critter though, so. It's kind of one of the appeals that I liked. Uh, let's get. Let's undo that though. Come on. Oh gosh, I just did something. Whoops. Let's replace that back down. Okay. <laughs> I do want to. Let's set these back to make these all see through at least for right now. And then of course these ones in the middle will have that little backdrop right there, you know. But the ones on the corner, they're going to be all see through on all sides at least for right now. And then uh, I'm going to add some trees and stuff here. And then I'll, I'll contemplate whether or not I'll add like, uh, you know, 3D facades and whatever else over here, but for right now, I feel like that's going to get the job done quite well. Uh, oh yeah, I need to remove, not like remove as well, get rid of them, I need to move these street lights back over here because I did rearrange the streets as I showed you guys earlier, so I need to rearrange these as well as add more of these street lights, street lamps, whatever you want to call them. I suppose I could maybe add one, so let's actually grab this one, duplicate this bad boy. And put it like right here, I suppose. There you go. I guess I'll duplicate another one, put it like right here. There you go. Just keep it nice and lit up. All right, there you go. I think I think the exhibit area is nice and well lit up right now with all those street lights and stuff. And we have ample room over here to add trees and bushes and whatever else I might want to add there. I don't know quite what, like, uh, like, like, oh man, hold on. If we look at the actual environments here, this environment looks very similar to this, which looks similar to this, which looks similar to this. Maybe we could have... That would be four right there. Yeah, that's four. I was about to say, like, maybe we'd have one row of, like, desert and one row of, like, uh, like, rainforest. But yeah, we have, we have four rainforest and two deserts right there. So that, that, that makes sense. Although I guess we could put the rainforest here, 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 and then the deserts in the middle, maybe? Although right now where it's kind of random-ish. I, 
like it though. Not really too big of a deal. I, I think we can keep it as is. So anyways, let's unpause. And hopefully we're going to get a lot of education rating out of this. And we're currently at two stars right now, which isn't too bad. Guess happiness is at uh, four and a little bit of five star right there. So that's actually really good. How long until the inspector comes or is she actually here? Oh god, she's actually here right now. Uh... Where in the world is she? Hold on. Oh, she's uh, she's looking right now at the, uh, the torches and stuff, so... Hold on. There she is right there. I see ya. Alright, well, let's actually uh, look at her clipboard and stuff. Yeah, okay, she hasn't written anything down right now. That's good. Five stars on the P-1000 torches is nice. Does she not inspect? Oh gosh, what's happening here? Why is there, like, stuff there? Oh, is that a nest that these guys built? That's kind of strange. Just have a random nest in their food area. Jeez. Oh, is that food? That must be like weird glitched food that's like right there for some strange reason. I have no idea why. Anyways, let's uh, let's check up on the critters over here though. Let's actually see how they're doing. Uh, barriers are doing well. Cleanliness is 100%. That's really, really good right there. Yeah, see the people right here complaining. The view of the uh, tourist, the view of the uh, Indian peafowl, not great. So that's why I wanted to make a like a road going from like here wrapping around on this side. That way there's a 360 degree view. If you go over to Timberwolves, what are people saying here? Uh, yeah, look at that. You can get a good view of the Timberwolf from here, I suppose. Yeah, I'm like right there as a kind of a medium. I don't know exactly physically where that is that they're saying that, though. Maybe if like the Timberwolf is like in the middle here and it's like super far away from all the paths. But uh, it's good to see these Timberwolves are looking so healthy, so that's great. Playing this 100%, that's awesome. Terrain, doing pretty well there. Timberwolves, I feel like they're doing... Oh, that's doing negative money. Oh, 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 oh! Yeah, speaking of money, we need to add some of those next to the... Uh, Oh, we're up to $2,000 now, that's great. Where in the world is it? Oh, I have an uh, exhibit in the search right there, so. Donation box, let's add these. Mmm, where should we do it? Let's do it there. Do it here. Here. Just put them all over there, I can place it, guys. How did I do it last time? Uh, okay, yeah, I see. Alright, let's do it here. There we go. That way, hopefully people will uh, contribute and help the, uh, the zoo stay afloat with their uh, generous contributions. There we go. And hold on, did I do that correctly? Uh, no. Yeah, I put too many of them on that side, whoops. There we go, I think we got now. There we go. I don't want to have too many of them, you know. But, uh, that should be more than enough. I think we have a lot of people here in the front checking out the exhibits here, but the, the, the unfortunate thing about it is that, yeah, only so many people could see each one, especially the ones in the middle, so. Perhaps here in the future I'll figure out a solution for it. Uh, maybe I will make just a one strip of enclosures or uh, exhibits here and then of course, uh, people can go from either side, you know. But for right now, although I, I guess either way, I could you. Oh yeah, on the previous, I think on the panda map, wasn't it? Or no, it was on the one before that, the monkey map. They had two, uh, uh, what do you call it? Exhibits like right next to each other. So I guess we could have groupings of two, and people could surround each one. So I guess we could have a grouping of two right there. Oh gosh, disease risk where peafowl and it was at 100% just moments ago. Golly, let me call a keeper over here. God, man. All right, well, we still need to clean out the other island over here. That way we have a, a staff over here, but I, I may do that here in just a moment. But I do want to see how the... So we're, oh, man, what is she doing right now? She's en route to Timberwolves. Okay. So, oh, man, she's at the Timberwolf area right now. Hopefully uh, hopefully everything is all fine and dandy over here. Hopefully she's not going to be like, oh, man, uh, there's... Oh, God, there's poop right there. Hold on, Kolonak and... Uh, what do you call it? Keeper? I'm like, claiming this at 100%. Is that actually poop? I think it is, but it's 100% uh, claiming this, so hey, I'm not complaining. <laughs> That's good. Oh god, she's writing down on her, on her uh, not keyboard, geez, on her uh, clipboard there. What's she going to give us? We have five stars for the other thing. Oh gosh, what's all this? Oh god. What's happening here? Nine alerts? I have no idea what these alerts are for. Hold on, hold on. I have no idea what, though. Habitat contents. Low food, I guess? Man, I need so many I could feed her through these guys. It's kind of crazy. Uh, I suppose, yeah, you know what? We did learn that we can give them better quality food and stuff, so let's give these guys grade 2 uh, food. Give these guys grade 2 food, so there we go. Oh god. The game crashed! Is it still recording right now? If it is, then uh, that's the first time the game crashed. But uh, <laughs> hopefully we didn't lose any progress right there, you guys. We had some good progress going on. Hopefully, uh, hopefully nothing bad happened. Let me start this back up, though. Uh, I wonder if it's still recording it normally right now. If it is, then that's good. But uh, let's, let's load back into our world. Let's resume. Hopefully, uh, hopefully we didn't lose any progress. If so, I'm going to have to redo it off camera. And we'll get right back to where we were just moments ago. But we had a lot of good exhibit progress. Hopefully we didn't lose any of it. Uh, oh, oh. Seems like we lost some. Seems like this is like right before I added the, uh, the, the lights there. And the donation boxes and stuff. Yeah, so where's the, uh, inspector's leaving the zoo? What? Uh, that's kind of weird. 
Either she's leaving the zoo or she just came into the zoo. Hold on. Let me, uh, let me unpause. That's kind of confusing. What's she actually doing? She's actually leaving? I guess she is. That's kind of strange. I did not know she was just leaving without even giving us any, uh, any ratings and stuff. Okay, that's kind of strange. Anyways, uh, water treatment, uh, failing. Oh, gosh. Oh, there's the, the, the mechanic guy's already there, so I don't think we need to worry about that. And, of course, the zoo is low on cash. Not really that big of a deal. We just did a lot of spending, so of course we'd be low on cash, right? But at least we didn't lose that much progress over here, it seems. Hold on, let me check these guys, uh, climate's good here, climate's good there. I think if anything would have bad climate to be giving me an alert right now, you know, so I feel like we're fine. Yeah, it looks like we're fine everywhere else. Yeah, let me just pause real quick. Place down the street lights, place down the, the donation boxes, all that kind of stuff. As well as the uh, benches and stuff. I forgot that you do need benches and uh, trash cans and stuff over in this area. Just because I did, you know, delete all this and rebuilt it all, you know? So let me let me just pause, try and get some uh, progress done. In terms of, uh, yeah, she's still leaving the zoo. In terms of uh, placing down all the lights and stuff again. And I'll see you guys here in just a bit. <laughs> 